Hello, about a year ago I made a video about this Bang & Olufsen 9000s and concluded at the end of the video that while it sounds really good with the BioLab 8000 speakers, it could use a subwoofer. So that's what this video is about. So my first thought was to take the original Bang & Olufsen 8-pin DIN plug cables and create a custom cable which split it into two RCA line outputs. These line outputs could then be put into the line inputs of a suitable subwoofer that had left and right input and output, and the output signal can then be used to uh, signal to the speakers. That was the theory anyway. However, there is one other cable within that DIN cable that actually controls the speakers. It turns them on and off, and it might do other things as well. The challenge here was that while in theory it might work, there was no evidence to support that it actually would, and there was no support online from the forums to suggest that anyone else had done this successfully. The only suggestion to add a subwoofer to a system like this that wasn't Bang Olufsen was to have a separate output from the Bang & Olufsen uh, 9000 going to a subwoofer that meant there wouldn't be any crossover. And that's a problem because really, when you add a subwoofer into a system, you want the, the subwoofer to create the bass notes and leave all the other notes, the mid-range and the treble, to the speakers. But if you just added a subwoofer separately to the system, then these uh, speakers will also still be trying to create the bass notes. And that isn't ever going to sound as good as when there's a crossover. The other challenge, of course, is actually finding a subwoofer that has left and right input and output at line level. There aren't that many out there. They exist, but the second question is, are they any good? Um, I am not an expert on subwoofers, so you know I'd have to read a review, and of course I'd be trying to buy the second hand because the whole point of this was to save a bit of money because a BO Lab 2 subwoofer was quite expensive. So then I thought to myself, because I don't know if that is going to work, especially with the levels and, and maybe the, the signal, maybe what I need is a splitter, maybe a surround sound splitter that's suitable for Bang & Olufsen stuff, maybe that's a good idea. Well, there, were, there was some systems that were made, and I'll put an image of that system up on screen now, but I remember it being around about a thousand euros, so that was way too expensive for a glorified splitter. So then I thought to myself, maybe there's another solution, maybe there's a Bang & Olufsen product out there that could do the same thing. And there is! And here it is! So this is what I brought, it's called the Bio System 1, and I believe that this was meant to be a splitter for the early plasma screens that Bang & Olufsen had in the early 2000s. This was very expensive when you, I think it was around about five to ten thousand dollars or pounds. However, I got it for a dollar fifty, which just shows you how technology changes. However, it was still worth something to me, or at least I thought it was. But as you can see, it's quite large. It's enormous, in fact, and this really is it. It's a big black box. It's actually bigger than the subwoofer that I ended up buying. Um, and the other challenge was is that I don't actually know if it works, and the reason for that is that realistically to get this working, uh, it needs to actually have a separate device that is for the remote control. There is no infrared in here, you have to attach something else, and of course it's Bang Olufsen specific, and of course this didn't come with that, so I can't even power it on. Second issue was that to actually make this work and attach to this, I need to do it using this, which is called Masterlink. So I'd have to go and buy a cable from somewhere, and of course that's probably going to mean importing one. So with this being the size that it is, and not actually knowing whether it works, and it actually requiring other parts to even find out that it turns on, this became a less enticing proposition. And also the size of the thing, um, I live in an apartment, so I don't really have space to have this out 
and it's really designed to be shoved away in a cupboard I'm assuming and at that point I thought that maybe it was best to take the plunge and actually buy a proper Bangalore and subwoofer because at the end of the day this would require a couple of hundred dollars just to make this thing probably work. So what did I buy? Well I brought a BO Lab 2. So let's talk specs. The BO Lab 2 is an active subwoofer which contains its own power amplifier and low pass crossover system. The internal woofer is rated at a peak output of 850 watts. It uses interesting technology and design to overcome the fundamental drawbacks of its small size. Though only 9 inches in diameter, the woofer, whose cone is exposed, has a long throw and is capable of large excursions without damage. To make the best use of the energy provided by this single driver, two passive radiators have been fitted, one on each side of the cabinet, which effectively expands the cone area of the main woofer. The passive radiators are of the same diameter as the woofer, and by mounting them on the sides of the cabinet, a very compact assembly has been realised. And the cabinet is of an interesting material which is cast aluminium. Connecting to the 9000 is done via a single power link cable. This sends all the sound to the BioLab 2, whose internal filters process the sound and sends whatever the subwoofer can't handle to the remaining two loudspeakers through two output sockets. There are two switches on the back. One sets the position you are going to use for sub in, corner, wall or free. The other selects which speakers it's attached to. It has an adjustable rubber base so that it can be angled. I personally like the design of the subwoofer it, as I feel it matches the uh, style of the 9000 and it's very B&O. How much? Well, prices vary depending on colour. It was originally available in black. There is dark grey, white, red and carbon fibre. I ended up paying 2,500 New Zealand dollars for this refurbished example. There's one last spec which is this thing can reach 110 decibels, so it's also quite loud. Um, I just thought I'd put it next to uh, this uh, BO System 1 just for fun, just to show you how big this thing is compared to this and, you know, yeah, not, not the nicest. Anyway, let's get on with listening to this. So hopefully you heard there that there's a lot more punch and a lot more bass. Now one thing that I find really interesting about this subwoofer is the clarity of the bass. Now with most subwoofers the sound that comes out of them is a little bit muffled and it's a little bit distorted. Even if it's clear it's kind of distorted. This subwoofer on the other hand creates very clear bass. It's so clear that sometimes you actually don't notice the bass as much because it's part of the sound and it enhances it. It actually makes, you know, when you get a, a beat of a drum sound like it's real rather than someone just adding bass to that sound. So it's not as noticeable, but it's probably actually louder and clearer than a regular subwoofer because of the added clarity. Um, it actually sounds really good and it really, really balances the sound coming out of the 8,000 speakers. This also allows the 8,000 speakers to get on with the job of just creating the mid-range and treble response, which means that because they're only doing these two things, they end up sounding better. There's more space around uh, sounds and like a cymbal being bashed and it just sounds much better. And the other advantage is, is that you are no longer worried about distorting the 8000 speakers by increasing the bass level from the 9000, which before was a little bit of a concern because it wouldn't take too much to distort that sound. 
Overall, I'm really impressed with the performance of the BioLab 2 subwoofer. It adds just the right amount of bass to the sound and working with the BioLab 8000 speakers, it produces a really nice, even soundstage. That brings us on to the end of the video. If you enjoyed what you see, click like, click subscribe, hit that bell notification icon, and I'll be along soon with more content 